Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, what's up, everyone? Before we get into today's episode, I want to thank autofiber.com, autofiber.ca, and autofiber.com.au for sponsoring this episode. And as you can see through those three websites, this is not only U.S. people only. This is slowly morphing into a global arena to where you have easier access depending upon or regardless of where you listen to the podcast from to get your hands on some quality microfiber towels so check out autofiber.com or any of the other two websites that i just mentioned support them for supporting the show and let's get into today's episode (laughs) all right good yeah for the third time, welcome to episode 379 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, your host, and today we have one half of a dynamic duo, um, and that is Marcy Tran from Clean Car Custom Detail. Marcy, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great, and we shared a phenomenal dinner with your husband and boys a couple years back at Mobile Tech Expo. You guys have been in the detailer inner circle. You signed up for House Call yeah. Pro. You guys are super fans yeah. and super awesome people. So I'm really, really excited to have you on the podcast today to uh, not only share your kind of detailing journey, but also some really important, probably the most important part of detailing, and it has nothing to do with detailing, but kind of, right? So why don't you take it over and give us a snapshot of uh, your guys' detailing business, your husband, how that all works, and kind of just fill us in in the gaps. Okay. Um, We started it late 2011. We started in the automotive industry late 2011, and um, our work pretty much evolved. Uh, He began as a mobile painter, Uh, But that experience is what makes him so good at being able to do paint corrections. Um, And, you know, when you first start your business, everybody says first year it creeps, second year it, no, first year it sleeps, second year it creeps, and third year it leaps. So we were doing, or he was doing the mobile painting, and you're just getting out there, trying to land accounts, and it was sleeping. Mm. And what's so funny is while he was doing that, he kept, getting like we were broke and he kept getting recommendations hey man you should try your hand at detailing i got this detailer and he charges pretty good money and and you're you know you're like a perfectionist and you know what he would say no i don't do that (laughs) 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 and after like the third person said it like the light bulb went out like Mm. oh we are really struggling maybe i should try this so um I think we share the same philosophy on this. He went out one day, bought about $250 worth of products and made it back in one day because he already had some little lots that he was doing work for and they had been asking him, do you know anybody who can detail? And so they promised to, to give him some jobs if he if he could handle it. Wow. So it was like instant, instant turnaround plus you still have all your products. Yep. And um, and we didn't have, we did not have high tech um equipment or anything you know we just had the the will and the drive to get it done and this was Um, dealer work because he was doing when you say painting like mobile painting he's doing bumpers and bumper scuffs and stuff like that you got it got it so he's doing that at dealerships and the dealerships are asking him hey how about detailing or he just had that yeah a little bit of in with the dealership at least to start offering detailing as well as the mobile bumper repair correct yeah that's got it. it and one dealership in in particular he kept knocking on the door uh i mean he was already in he was their mobile painter and he just kept poking just kept prodding hey how's it going hey do you need any details and they you know if it's not an emergency they don't need you so um nothing until one day out of the blue they call him up i think their whole department fell apart wow. and that is when we went to probably 70 i don't know 50 to 70 percent detailing and just keeping the paint accounts that he wanted. Mm. Um, but that, that threw us in the deep end of, of a whole new realm of you have to have employees to work that. So we were in house with a dealership for a couple of years, mm-hmm. two, three, two, three, maybe three years. Okay. And, um, and then after that, um, 
th- that was really good. I call it like um, paid internship. Yep. And you know, you you get thousands of reps on it, but mm-hmm. you had to keep the dealership's hours. And um, oh, because you're locked and, in. And, and I was just talking to someone else are, about that. They were subletting a. They're subletting a shop, which is like an amazing opportunity from someone else, but they work like he called it banker's hours. So he's like, I had to be done by five to to roll out. And he's like, I was starting to lose money from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For us, it was the opposite. If they're oh, open okay. till nine, you, you're not done until they release you. And oh. if they're not, and if they've got customers in the waiting room, um, but we don't know if the purchase is going to go down or not. You're sitting there waiting. Oh for, no. And you're keeping, you're keeping employees on staff because when it comes back to you, you want to bang this thing out. Right. You know, Cause you want to go home. Can. Yeah. So when they were rocking and rolling, Oh, it was awesome. That was fun. But, mm. um, when they slowed down, I slowed down and I, I was a part of their dealership. So I couldn't really take in public work either. So it was limiting. So we, we left that. And then, um, I mean, we really did whatever it took to to stay. So, uh, so what was that like yeah. to leave that though? Like, what was that? Was that a really difficult decision for you and Alex to make, um, or was it kind of you were just burnt out on it anyway? It was you were good to go, or was it as simple as you could keep the account, you just didn't work at their facility? It meant to change. It meant that we were relinquishing all the detailing, mm. and so we. We were apprehensive, but we crunched our numbers, which, you know, that's why I reached out to you to do this uh, yeah. podcast to, or to be on it is because, you know, if you prepare a little bit, then you can make whatever new venture you're you're jumping into a little less scary. Um, mm. And uh, what I, I had, I know it's not a fancy, fancy car, but I had a Honda Pilot with mm. all the bells and whistles and the kids had TVs. And um, I had a car note on that, and so I, I turned that in. I, I sold that and went to uh, bought a car cash because I didn't know once we left what our income would look like, and um, I didn't want the extra pressure of a car note on top of you know mm-hmm. the uncertainty. Mm-hmm. So I made that sacrifice just to take the stress off of us. Um, so we detailed out the side of our house um, for probably a year. And about a year later, we got that account back to where we still were doing the details, but at our property. Mm. And then, um, how far away was your property? We... Was your property your house then <laughs> okay. at that time? My my property was my house. Okay. <laughs> I think people got used to seeing cars all up and down <laughs> my mm-hmm. driveway and the track because I mean. Uh, to, several dealerships would bring us cars. Oh my and, gosh! Um, so <laughs> we got to see. Yeah, like I had like six cars up the, down oh my the gosh. street. Um, but I was around the corner. I was like 0.75 miles away from them, so that's got why it. they didn't mind, mind bringing us stuff. So we then about 0.25 miles away from there, we rented a, a location and we worked mm. out of that. And that was scary because we had never paid um, rent before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it worked and the visibility was great. Um, but then the, the, I didn't do, I had never rented a place before and I've heard other people that you've interviewed talk about, um, they ran into zoning problems. Yep. So I wasn't yep. zoned cor- correctly and uh... I got, went to Fort City Council, got my permission to do that. But in the end, I couldn't stay there unless I was going to put a whole bunch of money into making it, um, you know, compliant for got the it. Mm-hmm. And were you so already in scrambled? the building before you figured that out? Yes, we were it. in it, and I think we I think we rented that for seven months. Okay. Um, and and so that was an experience. It, I mean, I'm glad I'm grateful for it. It was really hard. <laughs> it wasn't paid. I bet. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but when we got the official word, we couldn't stay there. We scrambled for something else to rent, mm-hmm. and we ended up finding a location that fit every single one of our. <laughs> um, boxes on our wish list. Wow. I wanted it close to downtown so people wouldn't have to travel far. And we Basically forgot to mention where you're at. Can you tell everyone where you're at? <laughs> well, that's what <laughs> that we're to this. After I couldn't get, uh, couldn't stay at the last location, that brings us to this right here. Got it. Okay. And um, I've got a property two blocks from downtown with a four-stall garage um, and an 1,800-square-foot office building mm. and we can 
we converted most of that office building into living quarters. Wow. Um, so what I used to pay to rent this cute little house, mm-hmm. I now pay on a 15-year mortgage. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so That's it, incredible. It, it just... Yeah, I was really. I remember being really frustrated when we had learned we couldn't stay at the last place. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, and 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 I didn't even didn't even tell you before we spoke, but uh, before we recorded, mm-hmm. from the moment we got word that we couldn't stay there till we closed on this property it was three weeks. Whoa! It it just super it just, fast. Everything fell in line super fast. Yeah, and wow. the price is so sweet. I, I I'm still pinching myself. <laughs> and you're locked in, and there's no zoning issues. There's no yeah. anything. No, that was my first thing. I took all my paperwork to the city city Got hall it. right away and said, "Confirm. I think this is right. I'm safe." And they said, "Yes." Right, right. And that's is that uh, I'm going to butcher the name Brenham, Texas. That's what it looks like, and it's pronounced Brenham. And Brenham. I don't know if Got you it. have blue, bluebell ice cream in um, do not in California. Nope. Oh yeah, uh, okay. well. Uh, so around. I don't know. I used to be a really big uh, ice cream aficionado, and not so much anymore. Uh-huh. Okay. Unfortunately, so I don't know. But it's not up north. It's not everywhere, but around here, it's really, really popular. And in the city um, is known for the blue bonnets, and also mm. and several other things. But also that they've got the a big blue uh, bluebell factory here. Got it. And it looks like you're wedged pretty much right in between Austin and Houston. Exactly. Halfway. Got it. Halfway. So does that help? Or are you still too far away from either one of those cities to pull, kind of pull from them? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm really trying to uh, up my Facebook ads game. As Got in it. Start my face, Facebook ads game. So <laughs> <Yep>. maybe. <laughs> gotcha. So maybe when I, when I have that, then I'll be able to see. But uh, I do have some customers, yeah, that will come to me. Nice. Yeah. All the way from out there. I'm, I scratch my head. You're right. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so then it, when you um, when you sold your car and kind of were leaving that dealership in that whole transition period, is that when you started to really kind of think about saving money, being smarter with your money, invest, like investing it, kind of future retirement? Is that kind of when that all um, started to become kind of top of mind or have you always kind of been like that? So I have absolutely not always been like that. Um, I was raised in a home and a culture where you just retirement is your social security check. Mm. And um, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand investing. I can't say I really understand it now. I just know, hey, do do my work and save the money. Right, right. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But but even as I did learn about it, I still, I still resisted. In a, in a, anyway, Alex is the one and his family who um, really, really got the point that you need to start saving once you're working. Um, and so when, when I, somewhere in the, my, our 20s, some friends of ours introduced us to Dave Ramsey, mm. and that's where he taught, get on a budget. And, oh, I know how long. So that was about 15 years ago because we first got into our house. And I didn't have any credit card debt, mm-hmm. but we had between cars and loans toward getting, we got into a house a bit early, earlier, you know, as in I didn't have um, enough money saved up like you should. Mm. Um, we had, we had $67,000 of debt and we paid that off over four years. And during that time I quit working because I had babies. Uh, so that was, that was the start about 15 years ago of, of really paying attention to budgeting and, and saving. Mm. Okay. So what have been some, because it is kind of a painful thing, right? Have you found any, did you go through the whole to- Total Money Makeover Dave Ramsey program? Yeah. yeah Got it. I did. Well, okay. no, I mean, I read the book. I read the oh, book. Oh, read the book. And then okay. I'm a nerd. Yeah. Yep. I read the book and then I just applied the principles. Yep. And, um, and I just, I wanted to be, I wanted to share this information because it's challenging to keep your hands mm-hmm. off credit cards, mm-hmm. and it's challenging to to say, uh, "Hey, excuse me," <laughs> to say, uh, "I'm going to pay myself first. But I just keep seeing um, the same, the same. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, this will be edited, right? <laughs> nope. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Nope. Probably not. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, you are running a business. See, the thing is, is that I love, and I think a lot of people appreciate and understand, is that you're running a business at the same time you're trying to take time out of your day to do a podcast. So I do appreciate that. Yeah. And people do understand that there are things going on. You know, this is an audio only thing, but visually our, mm -hmm. our, you know, stuff is coming through our, you know, our eyeballs. So we're, it's easy to lose your train of thought. Trust me, I'm a squirrel. My brain is a squirrel <laughs> when I do these most times. How about this? Well, now I completely forgot what we were that's what, okay, what cause I I'm gonna, talking about. That's okay, because <laughs> I'm going to ask you a different question. What, okay, good. What have been – so the the overarching theme that we kind of want to get across on this podcast is like pay yourself first, save and invest yes. for your future. You know, one day you will not be able to detail or are not going to want to detail, right? So it's very important mm -hmm. to save and invest in other things. Diversification of income is something I've been huge on. Uh, for a long time, um, and and us as detailers always get in this this kind of rut of just like what's right in front of us. So the here and now money, right? And we don't think about future money. Mm -hmm. And so, what have there been and and uh, well, wh have there been kind of tips and tricks and things that have really worked for you that may or may not work for other people, but stuff they can try. And you mentioned stuff like, you know, don't not going into credit card debt for your business or not going into debt for your business. Mm -hmm. Is that, has that been one thing? Because it's very easy also to get lured into the, the latest and greatest tool, the latest and greatest training. And one thing I see a lot of people doing is paying for training and traveling outside mm -hmm. to, to get training, right? Which may be a great thing. Um, but then I also see them not willing to in, not willing to invest to actually get a customer, but they're they're willing to invest to get training. You know what I mean? But has there been any? Yeah. Sorry, I just did way too much talking there after I asked you a question. But has there been any like tips or tricks that you can kind of pass on that have helped you to do that? I, I do have it. It's not a trick, and it's not sexy, and it's not you know. It's it's almost like who wants to hear this. Um, self-discipline that's that's it like drawing a line in the sand and saying mm. if I don't have the money for this I can't do it and and it hurts us like right now I mean it hurts as in I just want to instantly go on there go on a website order this and that item and mm -hmm. you know poof I'm mm -hmm. gonna have it but to say like there was a point where we needed shop towels and I waited <laughs> if I I, you know, every, every week, I mean, we keep one to three employees, so mm -hmm. they got to get paid no matter what. And I can't, I'm all about not, I, I tend to be too stressed. So mm. don't do things to exacerbate that. Don't go and spend your money and then be got scrambling it. last second for how do I pay them? How do I pay us? Um, and if that means I have to wait two months to order a banner to put outside my building, then, then that's what it means. It's, I don't like it. But um, but and, I do like knowing I'm I'm not spending what I don't have. Right. And are you guys still doing mainly dealership work? Because does their net oh, terms on oh. payment um, affect that? I'm assuming it does. If you are, go tell that. Go tell that. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Um. <laughs> um. I don't know what my latest numbers are, but I like them. It's, it's probably 50-50. <laughs> so the dealerships are awesome, great relationships with them, and um, they keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. uh, and having this location, um, what a difference it's made. And it's not just the location. I mean, being part of your detail inner circle taught us so many things. Mm -hmm. Jimbo, when I left the dealership and we were doing work at the side of our house, mm -hmm. I didn't even know what a Google business listing was. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand why people weren't calling me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've had to learn the hard way, and then, <laughs> and then working that, and then learning SEO, and then getting that thing to number one, and, mm. and taking care of it, and adding photos, and you know. Yep. All that stuff. Sometimes people but, get uh, mad at me for being like, why are you keeping it so basic? And it's like, I I didn't know for the longest time what a Google business listing was. And maybe someone else doesn't. You know what I mean? I'm like, sorry if you're advanced, but sometimes we just got to go back to the basics. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. 
So yeah. So what else is uh, on your list of of things that you wanted to make sure you got across, or number number wise, and all that? Okay. So if I get on my soapbox for a minute, yep. Um, most of us run in our business. The money comes in, the money goes out. You know, you you try your very best to take care of yourself, and and really it just comes down to attitude and prioritizing. You're doing this because it's a job, and it's a very hard job. Mm-hmm. So make sure you pay yourself. If you were treating yourself, excuse me, if you were treating others pay-wise the way we treat ourselves sometimes, we'd stink and quit. Because mm. there are times where everybody's got to get paid, and there's not a left left for me. Mm-hmm. And I was doing that as a habit too much, and and I just felt like a hamster in a wheel, you know. And Have it's you read hard work? It's, Totally. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Have you read the Mike Michalowicz book on, uh, is it called Pay Yourself First? Uh, no, I'll look it up that. while you keep talking. Um, the E-Myth, I think, was yep. like, oh, scales fell from my eyes. Okay. Pay Yourself First. But um, it's important, duh. Um, but I kept having excuses, and I, and I think I'm not alone. I think a lot of people are like, well, you don't know what it's like. Well, yeah, we do. It's not easy. But once you first put some money aside for what's most important, it's done. And 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 don't get in trouble with taxes. And so it's called um, profit first. I, I just found it. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike Michalowicz, profit first. Um, profit. Yeah, first. I listened okay. to it on an audio book, and it but it takes that same principle of making sure you pay yourself first. He also has a podcast that's really good too. Um, but yeah, his, or taking the profit first and making sure you pay yourself first. But anyway, throwing that out there. You may enjoy that book too. I will. I'll, I'll check it out. It, that reminds me of, uh, I think, The Richest Man in Babylon. Yep. Simple little book, but yep. that, that was the basic principle. Yep. Um, and, and most of the time I do it, and sometimes I slip, but I, I just feel like I walk with... Uh, my head a little higher, not arrogant, but you know, just when, yeah. when I'm doing what I'm yep. supposed to do. It's a, a confidence um, thing, right? Like you're not, yeah, you're not working yeah. out of a place of fear or, or, and we talk about this in the detail inner circle, you know, that is like when you, when you can work out of a place of being confident and in, in your ability and skill set, that's a lot different of a position to be in versus scarcity, right? Mhm. Absolutely. So yeah. that's that's always a good when your calendar's full, you know, you're you're willing to uh mm-hmm. charge a little more, right? Or quote a little higher or you know, you know what I mean? Same Absolutely, with if you don't yeah. have that and payment. Cu- yeah. And customers can sniff it out when you're desperate, when you're when you're not taking care of yourself. So and, true. Uh, so yeah. true. And it <laughs> and then they're not confident in you cuz they're like, "Wait, what?" like you know, I remember when I first got started, I lost a, uh, I lost a job for an RV wash and wax because I actually quoted it too low, and the guy was like, "That's way too cheap. You can't. There's no way you could possibly do a good job doing that. That's way too cheap." And I was like, "Dang it! I was trying to hook you up and give you a good deal." Anyway, keep going. <laughs> Okay, so I'll drop some numbers here. Yeah, let's do Why it. Why this is so important. And maybe people say, well, I really don't have margin in my budget. But I bet you, I bet you you do. Um, the average car payment, what would you guess is the average car payment? $493. Are you a millennial or something? How do you- <laughs> I don't know. Is that right? I totally guessed. Okay. Uh, you, you are seven, $15 off. Wow. Yeah, very close. To be fair, I did go through the total money makeover, so I knew it was in the high 400s, but it had been a while. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's $506, but get this, okay. over 84 months. Got I it. remember when 60 months was a long time. I do too. Yeah. $500. And so that same amount, here's what I hear him say, uh, here's what I hear Dave say on the radio, if these numbers are off, it's still a lot of money. Yep. If he took the same amount of money, $506 from age 30, to 70 and invested it you would have five to six million dollars yep if that's wrong and it's halfway then you'd have 2.5 million dollars yeah um so i i just dropped the numbers about the average car payment right yes dollars yep and maybe a person says well that's that's excessive i'm not going to save 
that much. And then remember, I keep saying save, but we're talking about investing, um, putting it in a, a fund that will work, start work doing its thing over time. Uh, here's some other, some more numbers. If you have just a hundred dollars a month, many detailers start out young. If you took a hundred dollars of your profits each month and did that until you're 65, it would turn into 1.5 million. Wow. That is, did I say it already? Stupefying. <laughs> Stupefying. I mean, that's just <laughs> and if, if that's wrong, it's still a lot of money that you get to mm-hmm. and re- relax and not, not have too much stress over. And because like those numbers don't add up 100 a month and 1.5, it's because 90% of the money that you get when you at retirement age is growth. Mm-hmm. Of all that that you're collecting, you only put 10% in, and then you're just letting interest do its thing. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just so very important because 78% of all Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Right. So if 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, that means about 78% of detailers are living paycheck and Probably paycheck. even a higher amount. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I think so. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it's a... It's a wonderful outlet for your OCD, um, but it's a stinking business. If you're doing it for money, treat it like that and um, and, and co- collect what you should be. And, and if you're not where you want to be, that's okay. Make your goal and, and keep your eyes on the prize and, and don't give up until you're, you're creating what you want. And how, how are you choosing to uh... – how are you choosing where to invest this money to make sure you're maximizing the return? Do you, are you going through Dave, Dave Ramsey's like, what do they call them? NLPs mm-hmm. or something? Yeah. ELP, ELP. Endorse, local there provider. You there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But I'm, uh, again, I, I'm watching this thing and I noticed that with the last ELP that I used, um, my numbers weren't what, mm. you know, he gives you general guidelines. And even though I don't know the inner functioning of how mutual funds work, I don't, also don't understand the inner workings of my cell phone, but I know what it should right. be doing. And sure. my mutual funds were not doing the even close. I mean, I don't care about two, 3%. They weren't even close right. to what uh, the averages that he was saying. So I contacted him. Mm. I didn't get a satisfying answer. Kind of got no answer. So I went back and got picked a new ALP, and, mm. and everything is in the process right now of getting uh, moved over to somebody else. But uh, I, I really liked collaborating with him. So are you handling it yourself then? No or you way, just found someone it. else? Yeah, I found somebody else. Got it. Okay, got it. That's I was like, uh, oh, I mean, wait a sec. Hold on. No. No, no. No, I mean, and, but this one... It seemed, he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll touch base once a year. You know, we'll Got look it. at things. We'll see what you're comfortable is with. Um, so, yeah, no, no. Gotcha. Uh-uh. So I mutual funds, though. I got... <laughs> mutual funds. So yeah. finding a oh, financial planner and then, in? yeah, mutual funds, right? Yeah, I have, we have a traditional IRA because Alex used to um, do computer work for 10 years. And so... Um, I, I, you know, if you know the difference between traditional and Roth, I didn't even realize we right. didn't have a Roth. So I, gotcha. I opened up a Roth and I okay. start putting in that. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 So investing for the future, <clears throat> budgeting so that you can kind of redirect those funds, right? To instead of a car payment or a new machine or a new extractor or whatever, kind of investing for your future, right? That's, that's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. I don't know if that's the goal. I, I guess I look at it as just a step. A step. Um, okay. <laughs> but just just make sure you do smart stuff. And what's funny is I can't believe I'm saying this, and I, there's got to be other people listening to this who are like, I would really just rather forward this boring podcast talking about something I don't care about. But the fact is everybody needs to care about it. It's like kind of like mm-hmm. life insurance, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody thinks about it or cares about it until oh, one day you have kids and you realize, ooh, so somebody's counting on me. Mm-hmm. But um, you're counting truth. on you in, in this case, and something is better than nothing. I mean, honestly, I, I my new employees or team members, I give them the total money makeover. I tell them why to listen to it. I give them the, the numbers. $100 a month, and here's what you'll have. And I said, no, this is super boring stuff, but think about it. What's $100 a month? 
So mm-hmm. all uh, anyone listening to this, it's a pizza a week, yep. you know? Can yep. you cut out a pizza a week yep. to put this aside and then get to like feel like, dude, I'm the bomb. <laughs> I'm, yep. um, I'm taking care of myself. So it's. And I think that's a great point because I think you can get stuck in the weeds of like, oh, you know, I'm never going to get there or I need to have like this much money every month or, you know, a thousand bucks mm-hmm. a month or, or some like unattainable mm-hmm. goal. Right. But when you break it down to that, it's like maybe just a hundred bucks a month. Right. Like start, start there. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then as your business grows, as you grow, as you get older, as you make more money, you could always raise it or do whatever. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It becomes a game to see, Hey, where can I trim there? Oh, look, I got this, this, um, this refund or I got whatever. Yep. Um, Throw, throw it over there and, and let it do its thing. Love that. Love that. Is there anything else you got on your list that we didn't we didn't mention? Or I have a feeling that there's going to be a bunch of people that want to contact you to see kind of how you're doing it if they're in the the Austin area or, or that part of Texas, I guess. Uh, they're going to want to come see your shop and how you've kind of done all that. But was there anything else you wanted to make sure uh, you got across that we haven't already? You know, you know the only thing... Um that I wanted to say, we don't fit the mold and this for, for, um, for work hours, I wouldn't say work ethic. We really want to always give the best to the customers because they're paying good money and they deserve it. And who wants mm-hmm. to look like they do hack work. But, um, as we've added employees, we've forced ourselves. I mean, in the beginning it was forced ourselves to cut back our hours. Mm-hmm. Um, when we, when we had to do whatever we had to do, Mm-hmm. When we worked from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I, I hear multiple people being interviewed, and, and, and they're proud of the fact that they slept at their shop or, right. um, you know, and and I guess I don't have that, that kind of drive or something. <laughs> but I, You and I, me I, both. I have, a, <laughs> I have a 13-year-old. I have a 15-year-old. They're only going to be under my mm-hmm. roof for a few more years, and I don't mm. get to redo this. And yeah. I feel like I mess up enough as it is. I really want to be present mm. for them and then spend as much time and make as many good memories. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, and that, and that, that takes intention. So, um, just if I can get back on the soapbox, don't forget if you have little ones, you know, you mean a lot to them yeah. and being available to them is, is more important than, you know, more important than anything. And that has meant that I know, I know that's meant that our business hasn't grown at the pace mm. that it could have or should have, because I haven't, pu- I, I haven't pu- poured my heart, my heart and soul and tears and guts and sure. everything into it. Um, I, I haven't every single weekend gone out to the, the we know we right. should have been going to more car shows. We should have been out there more, but. Um, but you were investing priority, in a different way, right? You're you yeah. you have to do that balance too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're single and you have the freedom to do it, then, Hey, more power to you. And I'm I'm like, it it blows my mind. These folks that make their business and nine months later, all they do is Ferraris, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, duh, I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm jealous. (laughs) I don't know how, uh, how realistic that actually is though. You know, I think we talked about that uh at dinner that night. It was like, I don't know how I don't know how realistic that is and how much just internet marketing that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because my reality tells a different story too. Though those are in the fray, they're not always, it's not every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Well, if people want to get a hold of you or they want to talk to you more, they want to come check out your shop, how can they do that? Um. Well, Facebook, Clean Car Custom Detail. Um, my number is 832-212-9020. And as you see me on um, Detailer Inner Circle, um, I think I'm on the Detailer Inner Circle just so that I've got people that want advice because I love to give advice, whether mm-hmm. it's asked or mm-hmm. not. <laughs> but people are, you know, new guys that come along, hey, what's the best this and that? Yep. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to, to, um, share our favorite products, our favorite methods, you know, favorite marketing ideas. And, uh, and, and you know what? I like to do it because you learn, mm. you can learn off anybody and everybody. So we're always making each other sharper. 
I love that. Thank you for coming on the podcast today and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom and what you're learning and growing in. I really, really appreciate it.